The American dream. It's a version of success we all seem to strive for, right? Let me show you what's being accomplished. It is the happiest investment they have ever made. With further touches of distinction. It says girls in jail. At last, they have all the space they need. Space! With an abundance of work. I think we just sold the sprint to van. Yeah! But what would you give up for your American dream to come true? I think just because this works for Jay doesn't mean it's meant to work for me. Just feeling like super lost. So we're sitting here in an empty warehouse. Full circle. We came to it empty and now we're leaving. Yeah, empty. I know a lot of you guys probably have questions because you saw not only the struggles, but like the success that we've recently had. But I think you guys haven't seen everything because we couldn't really tell you everything for legal reasons. Well, for insurance purposes. <laughs> now is the time to kind of just spill out everything and, and tell you why we're leaving and why we're sitting here in an empty warehouse. But to do that, we have to go back to the beginning. Okay, we don't have to take it back that far. Let's go to 2020. After converting a school bus into a tiny home to live in and travel across the country, we found ourselves at our friends Scott and Ashley's house. They were in the middle of converting their own school bus and we offered to help. This was an amazing trip for more reason than one. Not only were we having an absolute blast most of the time. Oh my god, I knew you were eating a banana. I smelled a banana and now I'm like, I have to walk away. <laughs> I really hate it. What's going on to the other <laughs> But it was the first time we realized building was something we might want to take more seriously. After this, we headed back home, converted the van into a tiny home so we could travel around the country a little easier, and headed off to our first official paid job. It wasn't a ton of money, but it didn't matter. We spread the word about what we were doing, and pretty soon we found ourselves with jobs all over the country. It wasn't always the most glamorous work. Hate metal. But as we were building these buses, we were also building these amazing friendships with people who we still stay in touch with to this day. Even though we had just met, everyone took us in, and we always somehow became one big happy family. No! Wait, what do you mean? There was also no better feeling than getting to watch our newfound family's dreams come true. I'm blown away. It's so much better than anything I could have done. Oh my god. You guys, this is insane. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we were building these rigs out of people's driveways, which allowed us to be close to them, but it also posed its own challenges. Well, did you just hit your head on the nail? Oh no. Jay was borrowing old tools he wasn't familiar with. He couldn't help but wonder how much better it would be if he had more control. So we got the warehouse to kind of just take the building side of things more serious and stop doing it out people's driveways. I also think we wanted to sort of like prove to ourselves that we could be successful in this space. This warehouse felt like our shot at chasing the American dream. At first, we were overwhelmed with excitement. It's so cool. So I'll give you a quick tour. The main space is 40 feet by 45 feet. So it's huge, you could fit four vehicles in here. Nice heater for the cold winters. Toilet to do your business. Behind this wall is Kelsey's future editing studio. I'm gonna have to spice it up, but you know, the walls are really nice, a little spider, a little fun. We were building a business from the ground up and it felt like with all our experience, we had a real shot at being successful. Exciting things happening today. You wanna tell us? We're gonna go pick up something and it's very big. We started out by buying a Mercedes van on a loan. Look at that, Mercedes? And started turning it into a tiny home on wheels to sell. But we were no longer building out of people's driveways. We had all these new bills and expenses we weren't used to, and we were quickly running out of money. We knew we had to speed up this build so we could sell it fast, and we weren't getting any sleep. It's an early one tonight, it's only 10. Both feeling a little under the weather, but we still have this warehouse, we still have bills that we gotta pay, so didn't take the day off, went in today to get some work done. Oh my eyes. We were overworking ourselves, and I think that's what caused the fire. 
So are you ready to talk about the fire? I worked through the night, literally 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m., the whole night. And then it must have been like 10 a.m. the next morning. I was working with um, some glue. I was gluing up some fabric panels. And then I spilt some water on some of the fabric. So then, because I was trying to work so fast, I then got a butane torch to dry the water off the fabric. But obviously my mind just wasn't there and I wasn't thinking straight and I was rushing and the flame got too close to the glue that I was working with. It's contact adhesive and that stuff is super flammable. And within three seconds, the whole thing went up in flames. The fire itself happened right at the back of the warehouse. And then I had to drag the panel that was on fire with my bare hands from the back of the warehouse and out of the warehouse. Then I had glue all stuck to my hands. My hands were completely burnt. I get a call from Jamie and he's like, so there's been a fire. I, I, I think I'm okay. I think, I don't know. Like this, there was so much smoke that I think he was like traumatized from seeing all that smoke because it happened so fast. And thank God our cats weren't there. Like Pippa and Pixie were safe. And like, I think it could have been so much worse than it was. This is the only damage. But we did have to go to the hospital. You still have scar you have battle scars. Yeah, I, had some, I had some scars on my hands, you can kind of see them. <laughs> Not something I'm proud of, but it was just an it was just another one of those red flags of like guys, you're working too hard, you need to slow down. From that moment on, it was always a rule that if you start making mistakes, or you're starting to work 10 hours plus, take a step back, breathe and maybe just come back at it the next day. The fire was a huge wake up call, but as scary as it was, it actually brought us closer together. It made us realize we needed to come together and work smarter, not longer. We finally finished the van, but then we faced our next problem. No one wanted to buy that van. I loved that van and I, I took that van on a cross country road trip and I still vouch for it. So like as much problems as that van brought us, it also brought us solutions because that's how we found our next client. We basically had someone come in and look at the van and she was like, I love this van, but I just don't want a Mercedes Sprinter van. I want a ProMaster. And we were like, well, we can help you get one of those and we can build it exactly how you'd like. New build, 2023. How exciting is this, by the way? A new van? That client, like, I don't think she knows this, but she literally saved us. Just when the walls were closing in on us and we felt like we were done. Officially, I'm losing my mind. Opportunities started opening up for us. All we had to do was accept the work it required to go after them. And we weren't afraid of work. Pretty soon, we were completely booked with builds. Michelle's build came, which was a fun surfer vibe. <laughs> a sexy bamboo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> then Daniel's weekend getaway modular build. Jay took on smaller jobs, too. And today in the shop, <laughs> we have a new build. Another van conversion. This time, it's a pro I'm just joking. All we're doing on this is putting a roof rack and 600 watts of solar on the roof. Also, this 13 foot awning. We were so busy that we had almost forgotten about the van we built to sell. It had taken four months, but the time had finally come. What just happened, Jay? I think we just sold the Sprinter van. Yay! Stop. Let's get the champagne out. 9.30 a.m. I don't really think we made a dollar on it. Jay, you like to think we made like a thousand just to make yourself feel better. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I think we broke even on that build, which hurts, hurts so much. <laughs> but selling it freed up our finances and finally allowed us to work on our own build. On to the next one. Yep. Which is ours. Whee! Restoring a 1971 Airstream.
and then we were able to move out of my parents' basement. Woo hoo hoo! <laughs> 28, Every... 28 and 30 living in. I'm not 30 yet! Jay, you're 27, I'm 29. Oh. <laughs> then we took on two more unique builds. We took on clients who were single, clients who had dogs, and clients who were first timers. Each build was fun and had its own unique story. But there was a lot more going on behind the scenes than just building out these rigs. Building is just one small aspect of the business itself. Probably 50% <laughs> of the work. The other 50% is communicating with clients, scheduling material deliveries, making sure materials are ordered in time. It was a lot, but it still felt manageable because this is what we wanted. Oh, watch your balls. We were finally making a profit. Our inbox was full with build requests, and from the outside, it looked like we were growing into a really successful, profitable business. It looked like our American dream was finally coming true. But for some reason, all I could feel was a heaviness I had never felt before. It was a feeling I couldn't shake. For me personally, I guess I didn't really like feel as fulfilled as I thought I might. And then I realized that maybe it's because like just because we're Kelsey and Jay, like our YouTube channel, our identity, like everything doesn't mean that like all your passions have to be my passions as well. It's nice to see Jay like every day. He's truly found what he loves to do, to build. I'm ex extremely happy for him. I just don't know what that is for me. I thought going on a cross country road trip by myself would help me figure out what that thing was. I'd figure out why I was so unhappy. This is crazy. This trip was planned two days ago, and it's probably the most spontaneous thing I've ever done. And while I didn't get the answers I was looking for on that trip, I definitely found some answers when I got back to the warehouse. So I only just got back from my trip. Being back in this office, I just have like a heavy chest, my back hurts, my rash is like really, really bad. Um, it's like the stress rash has gotten even worse. Jay is so happy here and he's killing it and I'm just over here struggling a lot and I've been, there's no shame in admitting that you failed or you thought your life was gonna go one way so you tried something and it didn't work out for you. And like when your body is literally telling you, no, this isn't the path for you, it's, it's, you gotta listen to it. I think just because this works for Jay doesn't mean it's meant to work for me. I'm lucky that he's so supportive and has said to me, all I need is a place where I can build and work out. And like, you know what, I don't care where we are as long as I'm with you and I can do those two things, like I'll be happy. I'm learning that like I haven't put myself first for a while and it's like obviously my my own doing, like my own fault. I just want to make Jay happy and in, and in doing that I've like let my own happiness kind of suffer this last year. And like I feel so ungrateful to even say that because I know I have it so good. So like I am grateful, extremely grateful for everything I have and I don't want that to slip. Um, it's just been hard. This year was really tough, but looking back, I think there are a few things that could have maybe changed my experience. Not renting a warehouse in my hometown I grew up in because even when our business was progressing forward, it still felt like I was progressing backwards. Building a team around us right away would have also helped create a fun work environment and alleviate some of the daily stresses we faced. We also realized we'd have to charge a lot more to make a good profit with all our bills and expenses. Even though it was what our competitors were charging, it was an amount we honestly didn't feel comfortable charging. Everything was pointing towards shutting the warehouse down, so that's what we did. I think we've learned a lot of lessons along the way. Do you have any regrets? spending this much money on rent. Like, mm. it honestly eats me alive to know that we spent 26,000 just to have a, a concrete block of space. When we can just build it. 
The American dream is about building something from the ground up. And maybe that something isn't a thing or a business, but rather yourself. I guess I don't really have all the answers, and I don't know where we'll end up, but I have faith everything will be okay. And I think that's really what the American dream is all about. Whoa.